So Peter told us that uh, Paul's writings, Paul's letters, are hard to understand, right? And someone who is not grounded in Scripture will twist his words. What is Paul, what is Peter talking about? He's talking about if you're not grounded in the Old Testament, you're going to read verses. This is what Judeo-Christians do. They read a couple of verses here and there, and they take it at face value, as it sounds in the English, and they make up their own universal doctrines. But Peter is very clear that these letters are hard to understand. So if you just read a verse, and it is clearly what you think it says, you are still, or you can still be in error. So we have to compare everything Paul and the Apostles told us by understanding the Old Testament really, really well. And this is where a lot of Christians fall short. So people keep arguing about the Jew and Gentile thing and uh, we non-Israelites, because a lot of Caucasian uh, European people, they think they are non-Israelites grafted in or they are just adopted sons, right? These are all misunderstandings, right? So in order to understand Paul, you have to read the entire book with your eyes open, otherwise you're going to skip over it, right? If you if you just have learned your whole life, well, the Gentiles is all the non-Israelites, then you, you're going to miss these verses. You're going to miss what it actually says. So let's start in the beginning, for chapter 1, and then we go over, over some other verses uh, Paul said to gain tr understanding of what Paul was really saying. Right? So Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead by whom we, he doesn't say everybody in the world, he says by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations, all ethnos. It is not talking about all nations we know now uh, as Japan and Morocco and no, it's talking about the ethnos, it's talking about the, where the lost tribes are. Because Paul went to these lost tribes, among whom are ye also the cult of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. So these European people were called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world, throughout the whole cosmos. I already made a video about cosmos, but cosmos is the order of God which he made on this earth, right? Do you really believe that Paul was writing in that time and that the gospel was already preached literally to the Eskimos, to the Aboriginals, to Japan and to China. No, it was the European nations. This is the cosmos. But then Judeo-Christians say, yeah, but Paul went to the Gentiles. And they believe that Gentiles mean non-Israelite, right? Even though the Greek is talking about ethnos, right? The same ethnicity, nations. So they say, yeah, but the flesh is no longer important. There is no longer Israel flesh. It is now spiritual flesh. Even though they still worship those people in the Middle East who call themselves Jews, they still worship that flesh. But they still think they are only adopted people into the Jewish tree. Right? 
So let's take a look what Paul says about this. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So Judeo-Christians say that the flesh is no longer important, but Paul still thinks it's very important. He even wished that he would be accursed from Christ for his brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Right? So the brothers of Paul, they were according to the flesh, his brothers, they were also Israelites to whom pertained the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is overall God blessed forever. So Paul tells us here that the adoption, which is a bad translation by the way, but this adoption is meant for Israelites, right? The lost tribes were going to be redeemed. They were redeemed. They were reconciled by grace through faith, right? So now they are grafted in. They are grafted in again because they became a wild olive tree. It doesn't say that these Gentiles were always a wild olive tree. No, it says they became a white olive tree. But now, through Christ, they are reconciled. So let's take a look at what Peter said. Peter also an Israelite. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So people say, see, strangers, these northern tribes of Israel were divorced. They became strangers, right? They became lost. They became a wild olive tree. But Peter is writing to them. And all these places are in Europe, right? Even Galatia, Galatia, those were people from, from Gaul, Gauls, right? And Saxons, these people were also in Galatia. These are all the same people. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So they were begotten again, grafted in again. That's what the adoption is about. So is race really no longer important? Everyone who believes something about Jesus becomes a spiritual seed, right? Let's see what Peter says in 2, 9. So Peter is talking to Israelites, right? And he says, but ye are a chosen race. The King James says generation, but the word genos means race, right? Or a certain nation. We know that Israel is a set apart chosen nation, right? Or do you believe that this whole message was only for that particular generation? Of course not. Ye are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. When God divorced them, 
right? They entered into darkness, but now they were reconciled and being brought back into his marvelous light. So when we go to Galatians, where Paul addresses the people of Galatia, and by the way, these are all the same kindred people. All these books are written to European nations and only European nations, right? So let's see what Paul says to the Galatians. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So again, this Jew nor Greek is a bad translation which has led to much confusion. It's talking there is neither Judean or Judahite nor Greek. Who were the Greek? The Greek were the Hellenized lost tribes of Israel. The, Ju the Judeans, the Judahites left in Judah still kept the law. But the Greeks who were divorced by God no longer had the law. Right? But now in Christ there is no difference between a Judahite and a Greek. There is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Does it say anything that there is neither a race this and race that? Is race even mentioned in here? No, it's talking about that not just prophets and kings anointed had the spirit. We know that King James had the spirit, right? Psalm 51, please don't take away thy spirit. But now in Christ, bond nor free, male, female, everybody in Israel, of Israel, who put the faith in Christ, becomes one. Hence, in Acts, we see that God will pour His Spirit on all flesh. So this Bible is written by Israelites for Israelites because they are a set apart people. They have been put here for a reason, right? They have a task to fulfill. They are God's holy people, right? And people immediately, what about other people? What about other people? I'm going to make another video about it. But I'm not in this video, not even talking about somewhere way in the future where everybody will fly off to heaven or not. I'm talking about the gospel, the reconciliation, which happened 2000 years ago. And the European people now are the descendants of these lost tribes who were reconciled and brought into the new covenant. For the new covenant was for the house of Judah that was still there in that time. And for the house of Israel who were dispersed among the nations.